So, Lawrence, you're suggesting this idea that uh, inflation goes on forever and different parts of the universe will crystallise out and form universes like our own. But this is almost kind of a way of uh, merging the steady state and the, the Big Bang theory, because you have a universe that, while our particular bit of it has a definite origin, the universe as a whole is going on forever. Well, in fact, in a, in a philosophical sense, and I hate to use that word, uh, I inflation does in a way, on the largest scales, reproduce a steady state kind of picture because it's saying on the largest scales, on the multiverse scales, the multiverse is always looking the same. It's inflating and at any instant there are universes being created, there may be ones that are dying. And, and so on large scales, the universe doesn't change. It's always, I mean, locally it does, but globally it, um, it always looks the same. Locally, of course, in any given universe, there's a big bang. So in a sense, inflation for the multiverse does sort of re resurrect, but in a well-motivated physical way, unlike the standard steady state theory, it motivates the fact that what we, I mean, let's, let's step back. Inflation is remarkable. It seems almost magical. It's the ultimate free lunch, as, as, as Alan Guth has said, because it defies common sense. But nature loves to defy common sense. That's why we do science. At least that's why I do science because we force our beliefs to conform to the evidence of reality rather than the other way around. Because inflation literally means that it's space is being created. Space is growing exponentially during the period of inflation. And what's even weirder, so you start out with a small, our observable universe before inflation began was smaller than the size of a single atom. Think about that. All 100 billion galaxies, each containing hundreds of billions of stars, that we can now see in our universe was all of that energy was contained in a region smaller than the size of an atom. By the time inflation ended, that region was probably the size of a basketball or a baseball or maybe you'd call it a soccer ball here. But, uh, uh, and, and what it does is, so it causes the universe to puff up, but there's sort of just as much energy per unit volume at the end of inflation as there is at the beginning. It looks like the total energy of our universe it increased by a factor of 10 to the 90th. What happened to conservation of energy? Crazy. Well, it turns out that the reason the universe expands exponentially is because when you solve the equations of general relativity for, a, for empty space having energy, that empty space not only has energy, it has that, that energy has a negative pressure. It's very different than all of the energy associated with matter and radiation for which the pressure is positive. And what that means is that as the universe expands, space does work on 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 the on on the empty uh, on on the vacuum. So the expansion of the universe because of negative pressure is constantly dumping energy in because space is doing work on the universe as it expands instead of the other way around with matter and radiation. The ma matter isn't doing work on the expansion expanding universe because its pressure is zero, but radiation is doing work on the expanding universe, which is why radiation redshifts with an extra factor of the expansion scale. For empty space having energy, the universe does work on it, and it looks like you're getting energy for free, the ultimate free lunch. So that's in some sense that there's a gravitational potential energy change which is cancelling out the, the, the vacuum energy change and the energy in of the fact, photons. In fact, it was inflation that first m made it clear that gravity, by having negative pressure, in some sense, you, you, the gravitational potential energy can be negative and it can counterbalance the positive energy of matter. And you could play the two against one another. And in fact, a flat universe, which results from inflation, at least on our scale, has zero total gravitational energy, which is one of the reasons why I've been arguing the universe could come from nothing. Because if you're going to create a universe from nothing, what would you make the total energy? And it was that realization that the total energy of our universe can be zero that for me profoundly changed the way I thought about the universe and its origins. Well, thank you very much, Lawrence. We'll have you back in later sections of this course.